So you want to go to Shenandoah National Park, but you don't know exactly what you want to do there. The good thing is there are a lot of options no matter what your interests are. So if you are looking to go on advanced hikes up and down mountains and do some rock scrambling, then there's plenty of that. Or if you just want to drive along Skyline Drive and check out the amazing views at the little simple pull-offs with your car and never really leave your car, you can definitely do that as well. So a whole spectrum of activities no matter who you are or what you're interested in. This is why I really like Shenandoah National Park. So just 75 miles away from Washington, D.C., it's really easy to get to from anywhere in the Northeast, and it's a great place to go on a simple weekend trip, or if you live farther away and you wanna come in for longer, one or two or three weeks or a month, you'll definitely have a lot more to experience than I could possibly cover in this single video. So in this video, I'm talking about four of my favorite things to do in Shenandoah National Park. Now these four things can pretty easily fit into a single weekend as I did for this video. Now, now, not everything is going to be covered in this video, as I said, I'm just talking about four of my favorite things to do. Of course, there are so many more other things that you can do in this park, and if you know of any, please comment down below what your favorite things are to do in this park or that you have done or plan to do when you go and visit Shenandoah National Park. So a little bit of background about this park. So it's located in the Appalachian Mountain Range, specifically in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. And as I said, about 75 miles west of Washington, DC, it's really not that hard to get to. And yet it's not really as heavily trafficked as you might expect, considering how close it is to some of the major cities in the Northeast. So only about 1 million visitors per year, which don't get me wrong, that is quite a few visitors, but typically a lot of people end up just driving on Skyline Drive. And you'll find that a lot of the trails are relatively remote. You won't see a ton of people on them, but of course that depends on what time of year you go. So there are five campgrounds within the park and three lodges in the park. Now the lodges are very high up and they usually have very nice views uh, and so it's a lot more comfortable if you're not willing to go camping in you know a tent or a camper but if you are willing to go in a tent or a camper I recommend trying to reserve a site if possible otherwise depending on the season it may be you know first come first serve basis which it was when I visited so if that's the case make sure you get there at a reasonable time so you actually do get a campsite. Now if for some reason both of those options fall through. There are also motels just outside the park, which doesn't give you the full experience that you would get inside the park, but you can still drive in during the day and enjoy the beautiful park. So this park is actually only about 105 miles long and only 300 miles wide. So 105 miles long is very long. Uh, and as you can imagine, it's actually a very narrow park going all the way down. Most of the activities are on Skyline Drive where you pull over and park and either hike up or down from wherever Skyline Drive is. Uh, and generally it's, it's a very narrow park because you're just following the the mountain ridge all the way down from mile zero down to mile 105 on Skyline Drive. All right, so this is Big Meadows Campground in case anyone's wondering. And you have these little drive-in sites like that. And then over on the right here, you'll see there's some like bigger parking lots sort of where you have about eight cars. And then you can walk in to your campsite that's probably about 20 to 50 yards back in the woods. So not a whole lot at this campsite, campground, but um, it's pretty nice. What do you think, Ellen? I think it's pretty nice. Shenandoah National Park was first authorized in 1926 and first established in 1935, and being the 1930s on the East Coast, there were plenty of families that inhabited this area, this mountain range, and these families had been there for many generations. Now, the government actually had to claim eminent domain to kick these people out, and there's a very interesting history behind that, so I recommend anybody who is going to this park should first visit one of the two visitor centers and learn a lot more about the history of this park before going on any of the hikes. Now, the reason I say that is because when you're on these hikes, it's not uncommon to come across some remnants or proof that somebody used to live there. So for example, on one of the hikes, you'll actually come up to a small family cemetery at one point. You can go and check it out if you want or not check it out if you'd rather not, but there's a lot of that throughout the park. Now the first of four things that you have to do when you go to Shenandoah National Park is Rose River Falls. Now you don't specifically have to do this one, you just have to visit any of the nine major waterfalls in this park, and they range anywhere from 30 up to 90 feet, but of course on any one of these trails there are hundreds of other smaller waterfalls that are 3 feet, 5 feet, 10 feet, all the way up to the biggest one which of course is 91 feet. Now there is a lot to see with waterfalls in this park, and I chose Rose River Falls here because this one actually has two different waterfalls in the same hike, so you go down Rose River Falls, and then you end up at Dark Hollow Falls. Oh, we walked down about probably 900 feet-ish, and it's, I swear we're in a different season down here. So all of a sudden it's like 60 degrees instead of 45, and everything's green, 
it literally jumped forward in time by like a month, just going down 900 feet. And we're at the waterfalls now, they're really cool. I'll show you a video right now. Starting at mile 49.4 on Skyline Drive, Rose River Falls is a very simple trail. It's only about 4 miles, but the elevation change is 910 feet, and it's rated as a moderate difficulty. So when you go on this trail, you want to start off by going left, and you want to go clockwise around this loop, so you go down the steeper side, and you go along the creek and the waterfalls, and then at the very bottom, you see Dark Hollow Falls, and then on the way back up, you want to come on the fire road, which makes it a nice, easy ascent all the way back up, and of course, you'll pass the cemetery there as well, stop in if you want or not. It's an interesting place to see how people used to live in these beautiful mountains. Next we have Skyline Drive which spans 105 miles from north to south going through the entire park. Now it's almost impossible to go to Shenandoah National Park and not drive for at least some distance on Skyline Drive. Now you don't have to drive the entire 105 miles but I recommend you drive at least some portion of Skyline Drive and check out several of the overlooks. Now there are 75 overlooks scattered throughout the drive, some on the east side, some on the west side and the best part about this drive is it goes from east to west and you sort of weave around a little bit and you can take a look over one side of the mountain and they come over to the other side of the ridge and take a look over that way which is great for looking at the sunrise or the sunset and of course during the day you can see miles and miles in either direction. Now if you're driving at night I still recommend pulling over and checking out the night sky especially if you live in a city it's great to come out to a place like this and see what the sky looks like without all of the light pollution. Okay, so this next hike we're going on is called Hawksbill. We were driving north on Skyline Drive and we ran into this one. I think it's about a mile and a half and it has the steepest drop off in the whole park from what we read. So a lot of people talk about this and apparently it's a really nice hike uh, and Ellen's really excited to go on that, right Ellen? That's right, Mike. So where are we going? We're going from here all the way up to the overlook. got back from that climb and I said climb instead of hike because that was definitely a climb. There was only 700 feet of elevation change but over a mile or like 0.8 miles going up it was definitely a strenuous hike. So if you are older or not in shape I don't recommend that one. If you can handle it it's definitely a really really great hike. Probably the best view we've seen in the park so far. I definitely would recommend doing that hike. The view up there was just really amazing and it connects with the AT at the top so the Appalachian Trail if you're not familiar with it uh, is just, you know, a huge trail up and down the East Coast on the Appalachian Mountains, which obviously is where we are right now. Alright, so this morning we're going on Old Rag Mountain. I think I mentioned it yesterday, it's one of the tallest peaks in the park. You kind of have to drive out of the park and then down south and then in, so it's like an hour and a half from Big Meadows Campground. And you want to make sure you get here early because there are only 200 parking spots and they fill up really fast. It is getting smaller. The road's only like six feet wide here. Entering the trailhead. Old rag. Old rag trailhead. Mile two, baby. For mile two. How you doing, Alan? I'm doing great, Mike. <laughs> Where are you? There you are. Big flat rocks around here. Look at that. Look at that rock right there. Gigantic flat rock. And there's huge, 
huge boulders over there. I don't know if you can, can see. I'll try to see. Starting to get some views up here. You can see some mountains off in the distance. We're getting up there. Okay. Where are we going? All the way up there. Way up there. That's gonna be a long hike. That is really far. Even though you technically have to leave the park to come back into Old Rag Mountain, it is still within the park limits, so that means that if you're entering from the east, which you pretty much have to, you will have to pay the park admission fee unless you were in the park earlier that day, in which case you want to have your pass with you and show the rangers so you're allowed to park and access the trailhead. Now this trail they recommend is seven and a half hours. Ellen and I did this in six, although the six hour hike, we did hike fairly quickly, but we did also stop at the top for probably about 30 minutes to an hour. So make sure you don't go out and start trying to hike this at like 3 p.m. and expect to get back before dark unless you're really rushing that's going to be difficult to do and this is a 9.2 mile circuit and it is definitely a very very strenuous hike I don't recommend this to anybody who is not an experienced hiker so if you are somebody that are is not confident in your abilities I'll tell you how you can get around this in one second and still get to the summit but first I want to talk about why it's actually strenuous so as you're going up this mountain the first couple miles are really not that bad at all they're a little bit of a steep hill but once you get up towards the top you start having to to do some basic rock scrambling. Nothing too advanced, nothing really requiring any special technique, but nonetheless it can be dangerous and if it's raining for example I don't recommend going up on the mountain at all. So you really want to make sure you're as safe as possible because you don't want to get hurt and you don't want to cause other people to come up to rescue you and have them get hurt as well. It can be a dangerous hike if you don't know what you're doing. With that being said, if you are not confident in your abilities to hike up this mountain, the other option is actually to go to the right instead of going to the left. So normally you go to the left and go clockwise which requires the rock scrambling on the way up to the summit and then the fire road on the way down. Now, like I said, if you are not comfortable with this, you can go to the right instead and it is going to be a slightly longer hike if you do this, but you can go up the fire road all the way up essentially to the summit. You can take, you know, take in all the views, take all the pictures you want and then just come back down the same way you went up. That's going to be a total of about 12 or 13 miles round trip, so definitely significantly longer, but nonetheless, that won't require you to do the rock scrambling uh, and overall, it's going to be a slightly easier hike that way. Now, at the top, you're see Bird's Nest 1. Now Bird's Nest 2 is over in Hawksbill and you can actually see that from the top. It's a really amazing view up there as you'll see in the video right now and overall this was an amazing amazing hike and I recommend anybody on the east coast who even gets near Shenandoah National Park should definitely stop in and check out Old Rag Mountain. Wait, what? We only walked two miles up here? We made it! <laughs> Look at that! Nice! No, remember the parking? The whole thing's nine. Oh, that's right. So like... wow. Ellen's excited for another five miles, <laughs> five point two.
So that's pretty much all I have for you in this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down and click the like button. Also, if you've watched this long and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider going down and clicking the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. I know next week I'll be going to Olympic National Park and I'm really excited to share some footage of that. Also, if there are any other parts of this park that you enjoy that I didn't mention in this video, let me know down in the comments section below. I, I go to this park actually pretty frequently and I'm always looking for new things to do in this park. It's a really amazing park. And if there's anything else that you know about, let me know down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.